Hello and welcome to Napco Video Tech Tips. I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you how to upload a panel through the quick load of software. In my prior video I did a video on how to set up the quick load on Windows 10. Now I'm going to show you how to upload a panel if you're going to go in and go to a panel that already is existing and you need to make some changes whatever the case may be. So first you're going to open up the quick loader. Okay, you can just uncheck this and then close. So in the prior video, I showed you how to set up your USB drives, your COM ports, so all that should be set up. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to click on new and you're going to fill in the account information, new account information. So you have your account. I'm just going to put test in there. You would want to put in your last name, first name, address, city, state, postal code, okay, phone numbers and panel phone number here as well if you wanted to remotely call into it. This is a uh, great tool because the more information you put in here, the more searching capabilities you have. So if you want to group them, you can go ahead and do grouping and search by groups. If you want to do a postal code, search by postal code, you have the ability to do providing that you put one in. So now I'm not going to fill out all this. This is just a test account and I'm going to hit apply and then OK. So today I'm going to be working with a 1632, Gemini 1632. This is your panel, Napco panel selection. So you drop down the menu, you go down and you choose the type of panel that you're going to be working with. This is going to be a 1632. Download security code is the current security code that is in the panel at this particular point. You need that in order to proceed with doing any kind of changes to the panel. So this one I'm leaving default. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to take you through these pop-up menus, all the different icons up here. What you can do is, as long as you get to this first one and you see your zones in the background, what you can do is just click on this X and it's going to bypass all of those icons. You don't need to click OK and go to the next one and the next one. You just click on the X. At that point, you'll see that all the icons become highlighted. And then you would click on Local Communications. So you would need your USB adapter with your PCI Mini connected to your computer at this point and the silver cable that goes from your USB PCI Mini into the downloading port of the panel. At that point you're going to click on local and you'll get a panel communication screen. Now you can see this is selected as local. If you wanted to do remote, if you were doing it through a dial-up, you would do remote. If you're going through IP, you can go TCIP or an LMOD or the iBridge or even the GPRS radio. You would click whatever feature that you want to upload with. Now this is important, downloading the panel. If you're going in and you're working on a panel that you've never worked on before and has been programmed, you do not want to download to the panel. What you want to do is you want to upload the panel first and pull all the information from the panel into your computer. So you want to select all three choices, user programming, dealer programming, and description, and then you click on OK. And you're going to see a bunch of line information coming in, uploading all the different areas of the panel, and then data transfer completed. At this point, you brought the panel's program into your computer, the current program. And you can start making the changes, whatever changes you need to make. So if you need to go in and add zones, 
okay so if this happens to be an eight zone panel let's say they wanted to add more zones you would just click on the little box here and then up at the zone type you can go ahead and use a user defined zone by just checking these features that you want in there or if you click on the box up at the top you'll see Z labels these are all predefined labels that we put in there the most popular zone features that people use so if you want to now let's say add a Berg perimeter zone into there you just click Berg perimeter and hit apply and then if you wanted to go to the next zone you can just click on the next zone and let's say this is going to be uh, let's say a motion sensor you click on that you would hit apply you can go to the next zone let's say this zone is going to be a panic zone panic audible hit apply and then next zone and let's say this one's going to be another perimeter zone and then apply and then you can close this down all right then you would put your zone labels in here you would just click on here and you would type in whatever you want so let's say this is going to be now the basement this is going to be master bedroom panic and then spare room so now you have your descriptions in here you have your zone labels and then you have your advanced code so all these are going to be your contact ID code it's going to send a Berg code in and then you can see panic already was selected for panic you can drop those down and you can change those if you want so you can do the hold up if you wanted to on this one and then another thing you have to do is you're going to have to go in and select it in an area if you don't put it in an area then the zone is not going to work you can also just instead of clicking and clicking you can just type in one all the way down now if you have a classic style keypad okay you're just going to make an interior zone if you have a case style keypad then you want to select stay by pass and then if you wanted to go through all the other some of the other menus you can go into the panel selection and you can just go ahead and start going through the different tabs look through the different features that you have available to you you can hit F10 next screen okay you have your central station receiver information if you were to change this over to a central station where now they want to be monitored you have your subscriber ID number if you're doing contact ID in here so if you select contact ID in here then you still have to put your subscriber information in you don't have to do reporting codes or that other stuff because everything is predetermined by the contact ID codes and then you have digital dialing options paging options NL mod if you want to go through the internet and then you have EZM system reporting wireless if you're going to do wireless system reporting outputs again if you do in contact ID you do not have to fill any of this out system descriptions if you're using any PGMs for reference only you can go in there and put in whatever you want for that if you're doing any specialty items so you have your system options these are your different options for the panel 
external relay control, your different relay controls. And then if you have a gem print, and then you have your time selections for your exit time and delay times. And then you would just scroll through uh, area descriptions, your system ready message. If you want to put the client's name in here, you can put the client's name in here and it's going to show up on the keypad. Your area descriptions, if you have multi areas, let's say you have the house and you have the you know uh, guest house, you can split that up. Silencing options, this is just your bell control for Berg output, pulse Berg output, if you're using any PGMs. Again, if you go into here, and if you want area, if you have an area two, and you want area two to control, turn it off, the Berg output, you would just type in a two. Or you can drop down the menu and just highlight it. Okay, so then you have your keypad section. If you have more than one keypad, let's say you're adding a keypad, you just go in there, you add it to the area, and you give it what options. This greenish color means that it's not selected. If you put a check mark in there, it's going to turn it red. That means it's selected. And you have ambush. Easy arm. Panel access is just another specialty item for the PGM output. And then you have your user codes. So if you want to add user codes in there, if you just go in, you type your user code in, you just type your dis you know, name in, your description, whether you want them to be a user program code, bypass enable, and for area two as well. And then scheduling, this is schedule assignments for uh, opening, closing, suppression windows, if they're doing open and closings and you want to do supervised open and closings. I'm going to continue to do a bunch of these different videos and I'm going to continue to go through icon by icon on different systems and explain every feature in there. But for right now, I just want to do a simple one. So at this point, we made our changes. We will go back into local communication. Now you can download to the panel now or you can download differences. Download differences is only going to select the two features that you've changed and you just have to put check marks in those boxes and then you hit OK. OK and at this point your data transfer is completed and then you can go in and you can do a status if you wanted to just to make sure everything's okay I'm obviously going to get troubles because I don't have any EZMs connected to this EZM is an expandable zone module but this will give me up and it's going to tell me I have a trouble in there Also, don't have a keypad too, so I selected some features that I don't have connected. If I wanted to, I can just go in and do a keypad reset. That will quiet it down. And of course, any changes that you make whatever types of changes you make you want to make sure that all of your equipment that you need to make those changes is connected to the panel and that's pretty much it not too bad I look forward to other videos on uh, future videos that I'm going to do a series on the whole quick loader and start to go through feature by feature thanks for watching Napco video tech tip